Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very interesting equation. How many positive solutions does this equation have? The equation is x to the power x equals c. c is a constant, it's a real number, and depending on the values of c, we're going to be finding different solutions, obviously. So let's go ahead and take a look at two functions here. Let's go ahead and um, you know split it up into two cases, or two functions, I should say. So I'm going to be looking at y equals x to the power x and y equals c. Now, y equals c, as you know, is going to be a horizontal line. That's a constant function. So the graph of it is going to be a horizontal line. I will also take a look at the graph of these functions. But let's go ahead and do a little bit of calculus. And don't let that word scare you because calculus, if you know the rules, at least at the basic level, easy. For example, differentiation, it has its own rules. If you know how to differentiate a function, you can easily differentiate it, right? Okay, so I'm going to start by differentiating y equals x to the power x. But it's hard to differentiate in that form because it's not standard. So I'm going to write it as an exponential function. And the way to do that, as you know, is we can basically say that if you have something like a, it can be written as e to the power ln a. Using the laws of logarithms, you can always say that e, a equals e to the power ln a. Of course, a needs to be positive, it needs to be well-defined, so on and so forth. And that's why I said we're going to be looking at the positive solutions here. So using that idea, we can say that x to the power x can be written as e to the power ln x to the power x. And by using the laws of logarithms, we can just move the x to the front. So write this function as y equals e to the power x ln x. And when I say ln, I'm talking about base e here, okay? The natural logarithm, not the base 10. So now, I have this function and I want to differentiate it. Let me tell you why I want to differentiate it. I want to find the critical points for this function. Where the, Does this function have a maximum? Does this function have a minimum? Is it always increasing? Is it always decreasing? Those are the questions that I need to answer. And the first derivative can answer all those questions. Well, along with the second derivative, I should say. But let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm going to differentiate this function. And how do you differentiate it? Well, using the rule, uh, so the differentiation rule for e to the power u, let's say u is a function of x, is basically you write the same thing and then multiply by u prime, which is something called chain rule. You see, it's kind of easy if you understand the pattern. Here, we're going to be writing e to the power x ln x itself multiply by the derivative of x ln x. If you want, you can write it as the derivative of something first and then evaluate it in the second step. How do you differentiate a product? There is something called a product rule. If you have u, v and differentiating it, you know that it's u prime v plus v prime u. Again, it's simple if you know the rule, right? So let's go ahead and apply that. The derivative of x is 1 multiply by the second function, which is ln x, which is v in this case, plus the derivative of the second, which is v prime, the derivative of ln x is fairly interesting. It's 1 over x. And then multiply by the first function, u, which is x. So x cancels out, and we get something like this. y prime, which is the derivative, is equal to e to the power x ln x times the quantity ln x plus 1. Now, to find the critical points for this function, I want to set the derivative equal to 0. And when I do, obviously e to the power x ln x, if x is a real number, this is a this is going to be a positive quantity all the time. This is always greater than zero. So it can never equal zero. So then I just need to focus on this part being zero. So ln x plus one is equal to zero. And from here, ln x equals negative one. And this tells me that x is equal to one over e. Okay? So that value is what makes this function a critical function, okay? Okay, now, so my critical value here in this case is x equals 1 over e. What is that supposed to mean? Now, we're going to be looking at the graph of this function, and you could obviously do the following as well. You can kind of make a table for the derivative. We're going to have 1 over e here, and then the x values are going to go from negative infinity to positive infinity, so on and so forth. And let's see what happens. What happens to the right of 1 over e? So something like, let's say, x is equal to 1. 
right? One is greater than one over e. When x equals one, obviously the derivative of this expression, or maybe I shouldn't use one because it gives, well, that's okay. One is gonna work because um, it's gonna give us e to the power zero and that's one. So when x equals one, for example, the expression is positive, which means that to the right of one over e, it's always gonna be positive and to the left, it's going to be negative. Now, what does this tell you? This tells you that the graph is decreasing because when the first derivative is negative, it's decreasing. And when the first derivative is positive, the function is increasing. It tells you that the function is gonna make a minimum at one over e. And here's the graph that we're gonna be looking at. Awesome. Well, when I graph this in Desmos first, I noticed that I also get the dot, dot, dot for the negative portion because there's a lot of discontinuities there. That's kind of crazy. If you consider the negative values of x, you can't always raise a negative number to a negative power, so on and so forth. So it's kind of crazy, but it's interesting that when you zoom in or zoom out, the dots are gonna disappear. Anyways, we're gonna be interested in the positive section of this is the graph of y equals x to the power x right here. And I'm gonna use this graph to analyze it further. But here's one thing to pay attention to. I found the minimum point, and that minimum point occurs at x equals one over e. And we verified that by using a table. That's why I like the table because I didn't use the second derivative. Make sense? Okay, great. So now at one over e, this has a minimum, uh, but what is the minimum value, right? That's the critical part. Well, you can just plug it in, easy, right? Let's go ahead and do that. So y equals x to the power x. If x is equal to one over e, then I can just plug it in and y value at that point is going to be, if you wanna call this x zero, then you can call the y coordinate y zero. It's gonna be one over e to the power one over e. Since one over e can be written as e to the power negative one, you can also write this as e to the power negative one over e. And that's going to be a value that is less than one, you can tell. And obviously at one, we have this zero to the power zero problem, as you know. Is that zero? Is that one? Is that nothing? That's a different story. But let's go ahead and not focus on that because we're interested in positive x values anyways. But notice that my y value here is going to be less than one. We know that at least, right? This is less than one. Great. Uh, now, what am I gonna do with this? Well, notice that when the horizontal line, by the way, this is the graph of y equals c, I forgot to say that. That's my horizontal line and it intersects the graph. It is tangent to the graph at x equals one over e. So what does that tell you? For x equals one over e, I have a single solution. But is that the only time I have a single solution? Let's see. Well, what happens if you increase the value of, by the way, here when I said y equals c, I do have a c value right now, which happens to be the e to the power negative one over e. But that's just a particular value, c is more general. So now if I move this graph up here, for example, to this point, obviously, at that point, now this is going to correspond to x equals one because for x equals one, y equals one. Now notice that you're only gonna get one solution. So those two points will basically give me one solution, but more than that, if you use higher values for C, you're gonna notice that they always intersect the graph at a single point, which means there's always one solution for that interval. Great, so we're gonna write that, consider that we have one solution for those values. Do we ever get two solutions? And the answer is yes. If your C values stay between e to the power negative one over e and one, like something like this, then you're able to intersect the graph at two points. Take a look at that. So what, what kind of value are we talking about here? Well, my x values have to be between zero and one, right? So if my x values are between zero and one, then I'm going to be getting uh, two solutions, but I wanna base this upon the C values. So I'm interested in the Y values and Y values are gonna range from e to the power negative one over e to one. So we can safely say the following. If C is, if C is between e to the power negative one over e and one, of course, in this case, one is not included because at one, we have a single solution but after that, we're going to have single solutions as well. So, but if, if you have a C value that is slightly less than one, you're definitely gonna intersect the graph at two points. I hope that makes sense. So for these values of C, let me erase this, not to confuse you with the X value. In this case, then 
uh, we have two solutions as you can see here as you can see here the graph the horizontal line will intersect the graph at two points now what happens when c c is equal to e to the power negative one over e notice that when that's the case you get one solution and also if c is greater than one you get one solution so let's go ahead and write it this way i'm going to take that move a little bit this way or i'll say or c is greater than or equal to one we have one solution and is there a case where we have three solutions or more no the highest solutions you can get is two of course we're not considering the negatives here but is there a case where we have no solutions and yes there are for example if your c value is lower than e to the power negative one over e it could even be negative then the graph will not be intersected at all which means you're not going to have any solutions and what type of solutions are we talking about we're talking about solutions to this equation x to the power x equals c so for c values that are less than or equal to now we've got to be careful here if c is equal to e to the power negative one over e then we have a single solution so we're not going to include that in our interval so we're just going to say if if c is less than e to the power negative one over e then we have no solutions all right i hope this makes sense and this brings us to the end of this video i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.